Hello everyone, my name is Jen and welcome to The Book Refuge. Hi everyone, welcome to another recommendations video. And this one is for angsty romances, okay? Now I wanna preface something that I don't always do well with angsty romances. It doesn't mean I don't enjoy angst. Angst often adds a lot of tension, a lot of great stuff into romance. There's usually some level of it somewhere in a good amount of books that I read. I just don't always love books that I feel like the author's whole purpose is that. Now, again, that's just kind of like specific to me. There's absolutely plenty of uh, my wonderful book reviewers who just love oodles and oodles of angst. Someone who loves a lot of angsty romance is Big Sis here on BookTube, uh, Crystal's Bookish Life. But it's not always my vibe. So some of the, and, and so my point being, if you're someone who's also like that, that you don't like a ton of it, I want to say that a good amount of these ones are like a level of angst that I appreciate where it's not so much that it has me pulling my hair out, but they're usually a bit of maybe a slower burn because of that, or there's just some factors really holding the people apart. So there's just kind of a decent amount of angst within them, if that makes sense. But either way, this list of recommendations from me are angsty romances that I enjoyed and want you to give a try to, even if maybe you think you don't like angsty romance that well. Maybe you hear the word angst and it pu puts you, pushes you off, puts you off. I don't know what I'm trying to say. It puts you off of it. I want to say maybe you should give these ones a try anyway, because maybe they won't be as bad. Also a good question is like how angst is even defined. And I'm not saying that I looked up a Mer Merriam Webster version of it. I did not. But to me, I just define it as that um, kind of like the resistance keeping the two apart, whether that's like internally, there's something keeping them apart, or it's a forbidden romance. A lot of forbidden romance are going to have angst. That's what a good amount of these ones are. Um, or maybe just like a history between the characters whether it's because it's a second chance romance or just they maybe didn't have the greatest history when they were young, things like that. So those are kind of the factors that I'm putting into this. Yes, I'm wearing my books turn muggles into wizards shirt. Pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to go through these now. Okay. Okay. Let's start at the top of this with one that came out earlier this year, which was Older by Jennifer Hartman. I so happily got this signed from her. Um, but Older, this one is interesting too because it's set in, I think it's the 90s when it starts. And our heroine in here, um, Haley, she meets this guy Reed when she's at a party. Now, I believe she's only like 17 going on 18 when she meets him. I can't remember the eight, but I know she's uh, very young. And he happens to be at this party and I believe he's trying to find his daughter, but like she doesn't know that, he doesn't know that. They just have this crazy connection and he assumes that she's in her early 20s. So he still thinks she might be a bit young for him, but doesn't really like overthink it. They have this crazy chemistry, they kiss, they almost do more. But then he ends up uh, having to leave and it kind of, you know, it's it spoils what could have been a really hot one night stand for the two of them type of thing. Um, so they have this crazy connection and they're both just kind of electrified by each other. Then um, a little while later, so our heroine is in a dangerous home situation. She really is. And she ends up getting very hurt by one of her parents. And so she runs actually to her friend's house and her friend, um, it's her and her mom. The mom is divorced, it's a single parent home. And this mom is actually wonderful. And without a beat, she scoops up this girl and brings her into their family and adopts her into it, like without any question. And then it happens to be, I can't remember if it's one Sunday a month or when it is, but her friend's dad comes for dinner because there is a good relationship still between these parents. You know, they're um, still, you know, friendly and get along. And so he comes over for dinner and who should be there but this 
woman who he thought was a woman that he kissed and had this crazy connection with. And it's his daughter's best friend who is now like living with his daughter. So that puts the big old brakes down on everything right away. And what follows is quite a few years of forbiddenness between the two of them, of never quite being able to forget each other because of the connection that they shared and the way that they, you know, were able to communicate and understand each other in a way that no one else was doing for them. It's it's a lot and I think that Jennifer Hartman does such a great job with her forbidden romance because not only, you know, it's forbidden because of multiple things. It is. It's a very inappropriate relationship. And the way it's written in this one, that's not in question. And I think that's what's done so well about it. A lot of some of these other ones we're going to read, they're in very, you know, very unrealistic situations, right? This is still an unrealistic situation, but it's still like possible. You know, it feels more possible than some of these other ones, right? But this is one where you just feel so bad for both of them and you wish things were different because you know some might wonder like what does this older man have in common with this woman who's a teenager but Jennifer Hartman makes you believe it so yeah there was a there was a good amount of angst in this one and it really pulls at you and the reactions people will have when they find out are gonna be Again, they feel very real because this isn't in a mafia situation where people look the other way. It isn't a fantasy situation. Um, and it also is, you know, a lot of age gaps these days are written, you know, where the heroine's at least like in her 20s. So people can be uncomfortable by that situation, but it's not like illegal. You know, this could, it could be bad for both of them. And sorry, I'm talking about this more than I meant to, but one of the things that also makes it so gut-wrenching is that she finally has a home where she's loved and taken care of, you know, by her friend and her friend's mom. They truly love her and welcome her in without a question for themselves or anything else. And so it will feel like such a betrayal and she could possibly lose those relationships. Um, and what will her friend and the friend's mom think of her dad when they find out. Um, and you know, it really made you think of like what you would think if this was your friend and your dad. And that to me, this is one of the books I read this year that had the most like realistic angst for a, you know, extraordinary circumstance, if you will. Um, but yeah, this also just released on audiobook. It's so funny. I already had this video planned to film and I saw everyone sharing that this is now out on audio, so that's perfect. I didn't even plan that, but I'll have a link down below to both if you want either of those. Okay, I'm going to keep track because I'm just going to go through my stack of physical books here. Um, so then there was one that this one's so much more complicated to explain, but I had such a great time reading this book even though it was so wild. So there is Truly Madly Deeply by LJ Shen. And this book was so kindly. It was sent to me by Bloom. And I just, I didn't know what to think of it because the hero is such an ass in the beginning of this one. And that isn't anything new for LJ Shen. In fact, it's one of the reasons why I don't always read LJ Shen's. But I just really wanted to give this a go and I when I signed up for it it was kind of the same because Bloom doesn't send you every book you ask for right they can't they you know pick of course they pick between people who are you know consistently posting their stuff but they're also picking people who you know they think it fits books that you want to read the most so when they sent this to me I was like you know what I'm gonna give this a try uh, and see how it goes. And this is going to be part of a series. Forbidden Love is this one. And this one is about um, Cal. And it is about uh, Ambrose. So those are their name. What do they say what they're like? Yeah, Cal and Ro is his nickname. And they, so this is her best friend's older brother. And her best friend in high school was always like, 
didn't want anyone to be with her brother who was a friend and was very much like if you go for my brother like you're betraying me and she does go for her friend's brother to actually lose her virginity and she sleeps with him and gets caught by the friend sleeping with her brother and to try to save her friendship she kind of throws the brother under the bus even though this is like she's literally like just had sex with this man and he then you know as she's like throwing him under the bus to her friend which is so dumb of Cal in one way because her friend is always going to pick her brother and by throwing her brother under the bus now she's not only pissed that you slept with her brother and betrayed her she's also pissed that she's now like hurting her brother by throwing him out so it's just such a mess so we see that in the prologue then we fast forward I believe it's seven years later um the Cal's father has died so she's back in town she's gonna be there for like a, a a leave of absence type thing staying with her mom helping her mom get used to being a widow and get things in place and it turns out Cal is also in town he has started a restaurant there and this the town just absolutely hates that he has this started because they think it's gonna like ruin their town when really it's going to bring so much business to their town and help so much. And anyway, so there's like an internal war going. And um, Cal ends up getting hired part time at his restaurant. And he just like hates having her there. But also he does want to help her. But also he like hates her. And of course, it's going to be because he's been pining for her all this time. And these two are just very complicated people. There were parts about them that really pissed me off. But the way that uh, LJ Shen had me like I he was an asshole in a very specific way where like I wanted to know why like I knew there had to be more to it there there just was right like sometimes when an author writes a character as an asshole it's like they're not aware what they're doing almost it's like do you not realize how hurtful this person is being or whatever but there was just something about the way he was that like not only would he like act one way and then do these very sweet things like but not acknowledge that he did them. So there's those type of things. I just knew there was a good reason why he was doing this. And when you find out what it is, and you also find out why she was like she was, because again, she did behave kind of badly through all that. She just didn't believe that Cal or that Ro could actually love her. Um, there's just so much going. So there is, as I said, there's a lot of angst in this story. It really is drawn out. There are some pretty heavy, like, trigger warnings for this one. So make sure you look those up. She definitely, she has a link to look them up. But a lot of it has to do with, like, parental abuse as well as attempted SA happens in here. And bullying in high school, for sure. Um, but I just couldn't look away from this book. And it had that kind of angst where, like, I just wanted them to talk to each other. Um, I just wanted them to do it so bad. But I also, like, I just cared for them so much, too. So I don't, I know that might not make a ton of sense, but I just really liked it. And I'm looking forward to reading um, the next one, too. Um, it's announced who the couple is going to be, but I can't remember it. So we'll move on. All right, now I'll share one that I just read recently, and I actually, it was a last minute addition to my list because of that it got really angsty at the end, and I wasn't expecting that, and that's actually Chasing the Wild by Elliot Rose. This one's all about forbidden temptation, which I know a lot of these ones are, but this one is an uh, ex-boyfriend's dad. <laughs> I have a couple of those on here because I, you know... The, Forbidden romance is going to be kind of the number one thing for an angsty romance, right? But this one, uh, I've talked about it a lot recently, as I said, but this one is about um, our heroine. Let me look it up, actually, because I can't. Of course, I forgot her name. His name is Colt, and her name is... What's her name? Come on, tell me, tell me, tell me. Layla. Jeez. Colt and Layla and um yeah Layla she ends up on her ex-boyfriend's dad's ranch uh because he has stolen some money for her and he really messed up her credit and so she's there to like ream him out and she ends up getting stuck on the ranch for the winter and ends up getting a job there like helping Colt out um because his son isn't there when this snowstorm 
comes in and so now they're stuck up on this mountain and so she's actually going to school to be a vet so she's helping them on the farm or on the ranch as well as you know taking care of the animals if they get hurt or need help at all so um there's crazy sexual tension between them they actually meet briefly before they know who the other one is and there's this crazy chemistry they like are just really vibing that's how it always goes they're really vibing with each other and it can't happen is what they believe so lots of tension in this mountain cabin and you know they're in high stress situation they're locked in together it's cold they have this crazy sexual chemistry for each other and you know eventually that is going to boil over and eventually things are going to thaw enough for the sun to come back around and you know Colt he doesn't have the best relationship with his son as it is and he knows that this would really fuck it up so what's a guy to do so yes this one had a lot of angst because Colt doesn't want to betray his son but it's also kind of like you you did the first time you slept with her so let's not torture each other with it and also with this one like Layla doesn't even like like his son anymore because he really fucked her over when they were you know dating and they dated for a pretty short time and he did a lot of harm to her life so she doesn't give a fuck about pissing off the son but you know Colt he does feel guilty for um a lot of things but anyway love love okay moving right along with some more um ex-boyfriend's dad well this one it's more of dead boyfriend's dad and we have embers by claire kent so this book is about um rachel and cal and in the very beginning of this book it is near uh, i think it's only like a year into the apocalypse yeah it's only one year after the apocalypse began and cal is still or rachel is still with her boyfriend um they're both pretty young they've been so far staying with um the mom but the mom has died and they're on their own and the son is actually he's getting sick like he's starting to cough he's getting this disease that a lot of people um couldn't handle the unhealthy air after an impact there's an asteroid that hit earth and so they're trying to escape town now at the same time they're trying to escape not only are they going to run into some baddies but cal the dad it's funny that I just had two books named Cal and one is a woman and one is a man. Just realize that. Funny. Um, he's on his way to try to find his son and ex lady as well. Um, which it turns out to like, they were never like dated each other. He was like a bad boy, almost part of a biker gang back in the day. And he hooked up with this good girl and she got pregnant and he was never really invited to be a part of the kid's life at all. So he's very estranged type of dad, but it is kind of that same thing as I was mentioning in Chasing the Wild, where once the son dies, which does happen pretty soon, Rachel and Cal are now left alone in this tiny cabin in the middle of an apocalypse with nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, um, no civilization out there waiting, and the chemistry just builds for them. And, you know, she she loved her boyfriend, but it was a very, like, young relationship, and they were young, and who's to say they ever like would have stayed together um and he's dead now and there's still so much guilt that Cal carries and it really this is the angstiest book in the series in my opinion for sure but Cal is also like I love him so much even though I want to slap him upside the head so many times because Rachel again and again and again and again is like I want you I want you and he's just like feels so like such a bad guy for wanting this young beautiful girl who used to be his son's girl and even when she's like your son's been dead for years I'm not his girl anymore he just can't quite see it that way so he's gonna have to go on a bit of a journey to work through those issues but highly recommend this entire series of course the whole series has a lot of angst i'll be honest because it's a lot of characters not thinking they're good enough for the other person usually the men thinking that and the women having to like convince them that i fucking love you already you idiot i love that type of thing for sure okay then let's go let's see is there another i think i have one more ex-boyfriend's dad 
we'll do that one. So there is Two Wrongs by Kimberly Carrillo. This one's actually husband's dad. Like we are currently, currently married to said husband. Um, and this is the type of one of like the heroine discovers her husband is cheating on her, that he's stolen most of her like inheritance that she had gotten, that he hasn't wanted to have a baby with her. Um, but he got someone else pregnant and the father, so her father-in-law runs a, uh, uh, carpet, what's it called? A mechanic business. His son works for him. He discovers his son has stolen from him as well. It's just a clusterfuck. And also this, this father-in-law has been pretty mean to her most of the time they've been together. Like she's been with her husband since they were teenagers. Um, and then she married him instead of moving away and going to school. And it turns out, and you'll find this in the book, that the father-in-law just thought it was the dumbest thing in the world for her to stay and marry his son when she was meant for like bigger things. But yeah, she never took it. And so he's really like, he's mean to her. Like, we'll just say it. he's mean to her in the beginning. Um, then when they catch his son cheating, he has her come and stay with him. Um, and the son actually has an overdose in near the beginning. And so he's in a treatment center for a good part of the book. And that's when they're like staying together and both kind of taking care of each other. And she's filing for divorce. Like she's for sure leaving her husband. It's happening. And so her relationship with her father-in-law is going to spill over. This has a bit of daddy kink in it. There's supposed to be a timeline of how long they're supposed to be together. And yes, that son is definitely going to have a bad reaction, but you know, the heroine knows what she wants from pretty early on. We just have to get the hero to the same place. Um, there is a couple accidental pregnancies in this. I won't tell you who or how or when type of thing, but yeah, a little bit of daddy kink as well, substance abuse issues, and then accidental overdose. Um, so some safety things for this one for sure, but it was very hot. This was actually a Patreon read of mine three months ago. Maybe we did ex-boyfriend's dad as a trope and that was, I was happy to do that. I love it. Okay. I think those, those are all of the ex-boyfriend's dads I have. Let's go through some of these. Okay. Another recent read I had was Sunday Morning by Julianne. Now, this one has some angst as well. This one has kind of cheating in it. And I'll explain what I mean. Because I do mean kind of. It is kind of. Um, because, yeah, I'll explain it. But this one I just read pretty recently. I would categorize this as a new adult. Our heroine is 18. The hero is 26. And this is actually her boyfriend's brother. So the, her boyfriend's the same age as her. They've just graduated high school at the beginning of this. So we're dealing in this summer before college is supposed to happen. Now she's been dating her boyfriend for a couple years. Um, her father is actually a pastor in town. His father owns a ranch and, um, owns the ranch and, uh, the older brother has just come back from, he was in, I can't remember if it was in the army or the neighbor or whatever, but he did six years of service and now he's back working for the family. And she um, is very antagonistic, like very antagonistic towards her boyfriend's brother. And it's very clear it's because she's really attracted to him and he teases her all the time and is very flirty with her. And she's just like, no. Um, and the hero of this one, I forgot his name off the top of, oh, wait, Isaac, there we go. It's Isaac and Sarah, that's what it is. They're biblical names, it's a thing. Um, he just knows that she's not meant for his brother and he he wants her. And it is a bit like, that's a bit of an age gap too. He's six years older than her. When he left to go to the military, she was like 12 or 13. So definitely him being back is, things are a lot different now. But the reason why I say this is kind of cheating in this one is, yes, she is dating the younger brother at the beginning of this story. Matt, I think his name is. And they actually have their first time together um, in the beginning of this book. They, She really is kind of like urging him to like, let's have sex so that we, we trust each other. We care about each other. Let's do it. But they aren't planning to be together after the summer. They just aren't ready to tell their families and have their families react badly. Like literally these two, you know, 18 year olds are worried about how their families would react about it because everybody says these two are going to be together. It's going to be so happy. They'll be married forever, blah, 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 blah. And so 
they sleep together pretty early on, but like their relationship is actually like ending. And Maddie may want to stay with her for the summer so that he can still be like getting some from her. But she realizes like, let's just end it now. And she also is feeling a bit guilty that she's flirting with Isaac. And even though she acts like she hates him, she's liking him a bit. Also, Isaac is the only one who is kind of feeding her feeling of like she wants to be a singer and a songwriter and he has a guitar that he'll borrow her. And so, yeah, there's just there's some angst in this one just because of that. You know, she dated his brother. He's older. He's the bad boy. It is rumored that the reason he went to the military so young is because he got a girl pregnant. Um, there are just there's there's all these things that are keeping them apart. Um, this did have a good portion of it kind of uh, talks about religion in it. And as I said in my like original review of this, I really liked how it was handled. I liked how the heroine was thinking about her faith and questioning it. And when she was, you know, chastised by her father for liking an older naughty boy and for probably sleeping with him and all these things, she just she wouldn't be like bullied or shamed because of it. And I liked that. Um, and I also liked that she doesn't like her fam, like they get over it eventually. That's the point. So anyway, there we go. Sunday morning. Okay. Forgive me father by Katerina St. Clair. I won't go into depth about this one, man. I somehow still found a way to talk for ages in this. So we'll move a little faster now. I've talked about Forgive Me Father quite a bit recently. This is a priest romance and the altar woman. Um, she is, I believe, 21. Um, and she's back at home because something went wrong at college. She is actually self-harming herself. And when the hot new priest in town finds out, he's like, there are other ways for you to have pain without you hurting yourself. Um, and he convinces her to let him be in charge of her pain, um, in a sexy way for sure. There is also, this is a very like dark romance too. Not so much for like their relationship, though it is taboo. It's dark because there is an underground, um, human trafficking situation that's happening that is being uncovered at the church that this priest took over. So definitely check the trigger warnings for this because there are a lot, but it is also a very angsty taboo relationship between the two of them. Okay, then there is actually a historical I thought I would share. I read this one recently too. It's called Untouched by Anna Campbell. And this book, this book was very interesting. Um, how do I explain this one? So this is, we have our hero who he has been, um, treated as mad by his uncle and guardian and he's been locked away on this estate and been beaten and mistreated um and because this uncle had him declared mad when he was like a teenager after his parents died the uncle is in control of his fortune and then we have our heroine who she's actually a woman on the run she's trying to go from one place to um she's recently was widowed and so but her husband didn't make any provisions for her for after he died and so she's trying to go stay with an aunt of hers and she ends up being mistaken as a prostitute kidnapped by some goons who work for the bad guy and she's brought to she's brought to this captive estate um where this guy's being held to be his like to be his you know prostitute basically and really what the uncle wants to do is he wants to um let this hero sleep with a woman for the first time because this is a virgin hero because he's been here since he was a teenager and get him to fall for this girl and then be able to use her as leverage so literally um it's that type of situation and she's number one not a prostitute and number two not into this and so then the uncle threatens her because he has no fear of reprisals this crazy ass dude is like well if you won't sleep with him then i don't have any use for you and i'll kill you and no one will know what happened to you so now there's like a time timer on her getting him to sleep with her and he's resisting it because he doesn't want to fall for her. And she's resisting it because she doesn't want to be pushed into this. She also doesn't want to play into this sick game that's going on. But what's she going to do? So lots of angst in this story. I will say that our heroine is 
the hero of this story in a lot of ways and I was not expecting it. This book surprised me. I actually read this one for the um, Phantom Romance Readathon in September. That's why I read it. I was trying to remember. Okay, Where There's a Will by Ember Hughes. This is another very dark romance. This is a kind of second chance romance. Um, they broke up when they were young and he moved away. We discovered she was like forced to break up with him. Now he's back in town um, because someone has died. I can't remember who died, but he's back in town. And he goes to speak with her father. So he goes over to her farm um, and he actually gets kidnapped when he stops by. He gets kidnapped by her father. And the father is trying to basically force him to work for his operation. His operation is a human trafficking situation. Well, I guess I have two of those in a series, in this one video, apologies. Um, and he refuses to do it. Meanwhile, the heroine has been very abused by her father and she loves this hero so much. In fact, the reason she broke up with him was she was forced to, which was very sad. Um, and she's just been trapped here with her father. And now that this man that she loves is in the clutches of her father, there really isn't anything that he can't force her to do. So any pleasure that these two take together, any love that they have is kind of despite what this father is doing. And there are a lot of things in the way keeping them from being able to escape this dad and not just physically get away. There are other things, other roadblocks in their path as well that are intense intense. So this was a very dark one as well. This is the first in a duet, but it's an HEA for this couple in this one. The the second half of the duet is going to be about a different couple. So you can read this and it has an HEA. There's just, it's leading into another story. And what I'll also say, um, uh, sorry, blah, 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 blah. where there's a will is, uh, Ember Hughes is a pen name for Daisy Jane. So this is her dark stuff. Okay, just a few more here to go through. So there is Abyss by Swati MH. I won't go too deep into this one because the tropes tell you where the angst is. This is a uh, sister-in-law and brother-in-law romance. Her sister died and the brother-in-law is now a single parent of their child and she ends up, I believe, staying with them for a certain period of time. Um, I believe that's what's happening in this one. I now am questioning myself because there's another book by this author too that I've read, but I'm pretty sure that's what Abyss is. So this one has angst in it, as you can imagine, dead sister's husband. Um, Till All the Seas Run Dry by Eliza MacArthur. This is a second chance romance between a Selkie and a vampire. And uh, it, they have been separated by literally a thousand years, I think. They both thought the other, well, I think they, they both thought like the other had died. Okay, well, he thought she had died and she thought he had betrayed her. That was the difference um, because he took her seal skin with him when um, he left, but he took it with him because he thought she was dead and he wanted a part of her with him. So I'll just put that out there of what it is. But they run into each other actually at the end of Soft Flannel Hank, which was the first book in this series. Um, and then when we get Till All the Seas run, run Dry, we get the history of why A, he's so shocked to see her, and B, like where she's been and why she thinks he's an evil vampire and why he thinks, like there's just so much misunderstanding that's happened between them, but yet, it's understandable how the misunderstandings happened. Um, the only thing is too, is if you're a Selkie and you don't have your skin, you can never go back to the ocean and be one with it again. So she's been kept away from her family for all these years. Like there's so many layers to this drama, everyone. So many layers for sure, but uh, very well written by her. Um, and then the last one I want to mention, I haven't mentioned this book too much, but I liked it a lot. It was actually my first Lillian Harris that I ever read. It was called Shattered Secrets. And this one was actually an amnesia romance. And it is the accountant for the mafia ends up getting attacked and like thrown in the river. And he wakes up in another town not knowing who he is. And I believe she discovers him through... 
a newspaper or something. He's in another town and he's now like I think a mayor of a small town a few years later. Meanwhile, she had a child he never got to know about because she found out she was pregnant like the day he disappeared. And she also didn't know that he worked for the mob. So there's all of that background that's intense. And then there's her going to meet him, realizing he has no idea who she was and or even the job he used to do. Um, and also that there is a betrayer who's the one who caused him to be attacked and thrown in the river, who we don't know who that is because he doesn't remember who did it to him. So there was a lot of, this one definitely had the suspense to it, but it also had a lot of angst because this story, the hero never does fully remember who he was. And I like that about this one. I do. Usually there's that moment where they remember everything. In this case, that wasn't quite it. So there has to be them falling in love a second time. And I love seeing that. So very unique, very unique story. So I will have links to all these books down below. If you use my Amazon link to buy either the paperback, the ebook, or the audiobook, it, it all helps the channel for sure. As well as if you'd like to sign up for a KU subscription or try an Audible subscription, I have links to those as well. And they all help out my channel too. So thank you so much for watching. Let me know if there's any rec videos that you would like to see, and I will see what I can do about getting those to you. Thanks so much for watching, friends, and I'll see you next time. Bye.